In our complicated world, it's impossible for one person to know everything. But for politicians to make good policy decisions, they need to have a good understanding of the most important and complex issues of our time. When it comes to climate change, there's a process that helps make this more manageable. The scientific community summarises its knowledge in a report compiled by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC. Governments and policymakers look to the IPCC as the most reliable summary of climate science. The latest IPCC report is nearly 5,000 pages long. This is just volume one in a three volume report. It's a comprehensive look at the impacts of climate change and how to avoid them. But how does the IPCC work? How do we know we can rely on them? Let's get some of the scientists who worked in the IPCC to explain. Well, the IPCC was created in 1988 not to do um, additional research on climate change, but actually to do something that's even more original than just one more piece of research, uh, and that is to assess in the most rigorous and organized manner and transparent and inclusive manner the state of knowledge about all the dimensions of, of climate change. The IPCC process is very rigorous, right? It involves the, uh, the, the best scientists in the world. They dedicate their time to this. They don't get extra pay for, for working for the IPCC. A lot of people don't realize that. They don't need extra money to work for the IPCC. And, and for four or five years, they dedicate a lot of their time uh, to putting these reports. They have to bring all the uh, collection of peer-reviewed publications uh, that appeared and, and provide a synthesis of that. I think the IPCC is actually a very good system of being able to enable scientists to come together and do science and having people who are experts in pulling that together and being able to present it in a way that's useful to the policy community and to, and to public and different kinds of organisations and bodies that want to use that climate data. A clear uh, assessment of the science clear explanation to the public and policymakers and other scientists of what we do. That seemed to me to be an important and worthwhile thing, which is why I signed on. Scientists work at the edges of scientific knowledge, making new discoveries. They propose new explanations of how the world works and then test to see if those explanations are correct. In contrast, the IPCC's role is to publish what science has already discovered they rely on what is already known by the scientific community. By operating within this established consensus, the IPCC takes a conservative approach in the sense that they're cautious and moderate. To pass muster, to get science through this lengthy, multi-year, complex review process, you have to have stuff in there that is well known, that is well understood, that is not speculative. It's a consensus, so a lot of the statements that are made in IPCC uh, represent a consensus between a number of scientists. Right? So it's, it's a moderator, it's a natural moderator of opinions. You're not going to express extreme opinions in IPCC because the community is not going to adhere to that. Well, I think there's some truth in, in, in the assessment that the IPCC is relatively conservative because it's, by it's almost by design. I mean, there are so many filters uh, in the IPCC uh, process. Um, so it's an assessment of the literature. So, uh, of course, the, the, the most extreme parts of the literature on one side or the other side so will be um, moderated. In October 2015, the IPCC will vote to elect a new chair to head the organisation. One of the scientists running for chair is Jean-Pascal Van Ippersel. The IPCC already produces one of the most rigorous scientific documents in history. How does he think it can be improved? I think we can improve, for example, the inclusiveness of the process by in involving more developing country uh, scientists in the process. I think it's very important uh, for several reasons. Uh, one of them is that there is more and more scientific activity uh, related to climate change uh, in developing countries and it's impo important to, to reflect that uh, properly. And being in different parts of the world, it's not always easy. So I would like to improve the quality of that cooperation, but also the uh, quality of the cooperation between IPCC and other institutions outside of IPCC. For example, the, uh, the uh, convention, UNFCCC, the uh, United Nations Framework Clo uh, Convention on Climate Change, which is the uh, 
one, if not the main client, quote unquote, for the information provided by the IPCC. In one sense, the scientists have already done their job. The basic facts around climate change are so overwhelming, there's no room left to argue. The climate science community has concluded that humans are changing our planet's climate, and this is going to come at a massive cost, both in humanitarian and economic terms. The IPCC will continue to do their work, summarising our scientific understanding of exactly how, when and where climate change will affect people. Now it's up to policymakers and communities to act to avoid these negative climate change impacts.